Welcome guys, Dieter here again. Uh, once I was this summer in the beautiful little German city of Trier, I met Andy Gnifke. He is a beer vlogger and of course also a professor. Welcome Andy, how are you doing? Hi Dieter, I'm fine. Thanks for inviting me here and it's no, great to meet you again. No, no problem. Uh, weird circumstances. <laughs> uh, tell me a bit. Um, what is your background in the non-beer world? Um, well, um, I started uh, studying at the University of Trier and I did some uh, German uh, language history and uh, literature and uh, history, medieval history, and uh, made my grade there and then went to Luxembourg to the university and made my PhD in uh, medieval language history. And yeah, it's a bit difficult to uh, find a job there at the university. So <laughs> I'm, I moved into journalism a bit. And uh, yeah, there was a winded road. And at the end, I'm now in Luxembourg in a software, a software company. And uh, we are doing software for the uh, mobile industry. And I'm doing all customer related stuff. Yeah, so you're not doing the technical programming things or you do more the translations? No, no, no. No, I do all the um, customer related things, customer support, client services, client onboardings, marketing, things like this. Yeah, cool, cool. Um, and journalism, did you start it with beer journalism or how? what was your first journalistic approach? Uh, actually, it was football. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I made, uh, went to local football matches and uh, that was quite fun. It was a fun time and um, then it got bigger and bigger and uh, I got more responsibility and then I established a, a series about wine because we are living here in a beautiful wine region. And when I came to Trier in 1996, I found out that it's a, a, a beer desert and there's no not that much beer around and I started uh, drinking wine mostly because it's world-class wine. Why should I drink average beer? That was my opinion then. And uh, so I became really focused on wine and it's high quality wine. The people here are very interested in wine and in good wine and they're enjoying a good drink. And this is something that led then uh, into the beer scene because it's always also a scene that's very interested in good products and local products and uh, it's not too far away from the wine and the wine connoisseurs and uh, yeah so uh, I went to a beer festival actually and uh, then I started to rediscover beer uh, I don't know eight years ago I think yeah, because most people think of course Germany as the the famous beer country for their lagers um, but Trier is more of a wine city of course yeah yeah, there's two things uh, that are shaping the, the alcoholic landscape here, I would say. Uh, it's a wine region and people love the wine and it's a very, it's a good one. It's Riesling world, it's Riesling country and uh, it's the best area in the world to drink Riesling wild, wines. But on the other side, uh, it's also Bitburger country and Bitburger is one of the biggest beer brands in Germany and it's just, uh, I don't know, 40 kilometers away. And so all bars and pubs serve Bitburger beer. So we have this wine drinking scene and the other guys are drinking uh, that are beer drinkers usually drink Bitburger beer. So there's not that much room for special beers here. Yeah. You told me that around um, eight years ago, you did your first beer festival. What was that? Was it a typical German style uh, lager pills beer festival with a half a liters and uh, wooden tables or? And uh, luckily not. <laughs> it was uh, really a craft beer festival. It was, uh, we have one small, lo uh, we have actually two local breweries here in town now. Um, and one is uh, Kraft Poi, and it's, it's actually a, a restaurant and a hotel. And they have also a brewery. And they are hosting one of the nicest beer festivals in Germany, craft beer festivals. It's not too big, it's 20 breweries. And um, they're doing it uh, every year. And um, it's a nice, small but nice festival to explore very good beers. And it's uh, yeah, one of the most beautiful festivals you can go in Germany, I would yeah. say. 
it's not too big and it's not too crowded and you have the chance to talk to the brewers and it's quite uh, really really nice food is good which is also important at beer festivals and that's yeah. really a nice festival. A recommendation when beer festivals will be a thing again. Yeah. Is it like um, thinking on craft beer, real craft beer? I always have in my head that Germany is a bit behind on that and that the scene is not that big. Is that changing the last years or is Germany still holding on to the traditional values of beer? It's really changing. And. Um, I really like the the community, the craft beer community uh, in Germany, and it's opening itself into the more international beer styles. So there's more than lager. <laughs> we are still very good at lager beers, even from a craft beer perspective. If you go to Franconia or so, and you have this really traditional small breweries doing great Keller beers, Zwickel, lager beers, Bock beers, things like this, smoked beers. This is still beer and. Um, and highly uh, recognized in the craft beer scene too. But uh, it's all also opening. We have very good uh, pr smaller breweries that are now doing really good New England IPAs too, for example, or international style beers. So it's really getting bigger and bigger and um, still less, of course, from a, um, it's not so big when it comes to hectoliters or so, but uh, the scene itself is growing and it's a scene I really like. And beer drinkers and craft beer drinkers usually are good people and nice people. Yeah. And uh, this is why I go to festivals and meet those guys. Yeah, and the beer block you have now, um, beer block Trier, where you write in only in German, I assume? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the, the block itself is in German, yeah, but the social media, I changed now to uh, German and English. Yeah. Tell us a bit, what is the concept around that? And when did that start? It was that like, I love to write and I want to share it and see how it goes. Um, yeah, it was actually, um, my job can be a bit technical and a bit boring. So, and I'm a creative guy and this was a bit like, uh, yeah, something I do in my uh, free time to get creative again. And I always love to write and, uh, so this was uh, something related just to me, but it was also meant to support the craft beer scene here in Trier, which is really, I thought was really small when I started five years ago. And the was to people together online. Now it all turned online and virtual uh, at the moment, but uh, this was basically the starting point to show people where they can buy good beer, where they can find good beer, where are the bars, um, that are open to good beer and uh, where the people that love beer meet can meet each other. That was the aim behind it and to show people there's also a craft beer scene and a beer interested scene in Trier. And it, a lot changed since then. And we now, the craft beer scene here in Trier now is uh, doing online tastings like many people are doing at the moment. Yeah. We started in March weekly and uh, it was actually a huge success. And um, we have between 50 and 200 people joining and it's always great fun. And okay. we had this small period in summer when we are allowed to meet again in pubs and bars when they were open. And um, that was ridiculous to see how all the people that I met in these online tastings coming to the pub and um, meeting me and all the other guys from the scene here in Trier. And it was amazing to see that this community has really uh, yeah, found together in this uh, online tastings. And now it, we are back online, of course. And uh, yeah, it's, even if it's not the perfect way to drink beer, it's even better than nothing. And sitting alone at home, it's better to sit together with 200 like-minded people online on a Saturday evening for hours. How do um, traditional big German breweries look towards craft beer? Are they like, all right, let's pick up on it and let's also make a craftish version of our beers or let's do a collab or are big German breweries n not yet open for that? It depends a bit. Um, I can speak uh, from the Spitburger perspective. They are really open to it and they are, I would say they are part of the beer scene here in Trier because when we had this... Uh, 
uh, already started with this uh, beer, online beer tastings. Uh, we invited all the local breweries to take part because um, yeah, we wanted to support the people there to show their beers and the brewers presented their beers. And Bitburger was part of it. And um, one of their um, managers uh, was stuck in Kapstadt at this moment and uh, was there for weeks and I think months. And he joined all our tastings. And it was one of the main managers of Bitburger, very open to the local beer scene and to craft beers. And they did a collab with uh, Sierra Nevada in December, uh, two years ago now, and uh, make, made the triple hop lager together with Sierra Nevada. And there was a huge event when this beer was presented. Um, so they are quite open to craft beer and they have this small brewery inside the big brewery where they are making test brews and things. and this turned out to be a small craft beer brewery inside of the big uh, Bitburger brewery. So they are quite open to craft beer, but I'm, I know that there are other breweries that are uh, not as open as Bitburger is, for example. But they still want to create a Keller beer. At the moment, these lager beers are even more popular in the craft beer scene. And uh, they are all doing Keller beer and Zwickel beers now, this uh, unfiltered beers that are really getting popular uh, beside the Pilsner beers and the plain lagers. Yeah. Um, for yeah, most Germans, what styles do they like to discover the most, except, of course, the traditional German styles? Um, difficult to say, but I think the first approach uh, usually is uh, IPAs. Okay. That uh, That's, in most cases, the first step into the craft beer scene because it's so different. And um, it's uh, an, a taste explosion you get immediately. Uh, it's um, more difficult to go than through directly to a sour beer. It's over complex yeah. in this case, but it does need to be directly a, a really extremely hop beer, but a, a slightly hoppy, a pale ale or a session IPA. I think this is mostly the, the, the first step. Yeah. And... Imperial stouts, the more darker, stronger beers catching also good on? I think yes, because uh, it's some, uh, something uh, people that are a bit interested in beer is the first thing they discover. They go into an Irish pub and get a Guinness, for example. So yeah. they're a bit used to this uh, style of beer. And uh, yeah, it opens, uh, can open a, a new beer world to drink than a, an Imperial stout or an adjunct stout or things like this. Yeah. Uh, tell us a bit. Um, I also read on your uh, blog that you travel a lot to different beer festivals. Um, what was previous, uh, not in Corona year, but before Corona, what was on your agenda? What festivals did you do and with which point of view do you go to there? Um, it turned out that it gets more and more because uh, at each festival you meet and make new friends and uh, and then you have to go the, back there uh, the following year. Um, <laughs> so it gets more and more. Um, but my favorite festivals uh, I always do is uh, Aragon Sour Festival in uh, Reggio Media in Italy. Then it's um, Billy's, Billy's Craft Beer Festival in Antwerp. And our local craft beer festival, of course, is something I always do. And uh, Budapest Beer Week is a very nice festival. I went twice now and hope okay. to go again in September. Yeah, cool. But my first big festival was Borefts, uh, the Molen. Which one? Uh, Borefts Beer Festival. Ah, the yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Hey, you ever went to the, the more Scandinavian countries? Not yet, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um... In terms of plans this year, um, planning any Belgium festivals to visit uh, at the end of the summer vacation, maybe? Yeah. Um, so what I always say from a beer perspective is uh, the best thing about Trier is that it's close to Belgium. So <laughs> I really <laughs> like and admire the Belgian beers. And uh, yes, there are definitely plans to go there. And I usually spend New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve in, uh, in Bruges. That uh, became a bit of a tradition. It was that now the first year for, I don't know, 10 years or so that I haven't been there, and I'm quite sad about it. <laughs> and um, 
yeah, I like Belgium a lot. And uh, Tour de Goose is uh, also something that's definitely on the agenda when it will happen again. Yeah, yeah, that was also unfortunately cancelled last year, I, I thought. Yeah, continue yeah. quintessence as well, but I missed to get a ticket for it. So maybe there's a second chance to get a ticket <laughs> for the quintessence. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and then in Trier now, you, uh, I was quite surprised to find a, a cool craft beer bar uh, there where I met you. I was like, okay, even in this little town, they now have a craft beer bar. Um, yeah. the, did it, uh, when did it came there and that really changed how uh, you could find craft beer in Trier because they do a bottle shop. They have how many yeah. taps? 12? 12. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a craft pots. It's uh, this guy. It's yeah. not me. It's uh, <laughs> the craft pot. <laughs> and um, yeah, he opened two years ago. And uh, yeah, it was a big step for the Trier beer scene because it's in the middle of the uh, old town. And uh, it's the place we actually meet and where we can have uh, bottle shares and uh, tap takeovers. Uh, so the usual craft beer stuff. And uh, the guy is, that's running it, uh, it's Nico, and he's actually a brewer, and um, he's still part-time working at Bitburger, and uh, this is his dream, and he planned it for many, many years and waited to find the perfect spot, and then he found this uh, uh, shoe shop, at, actually, and uh, <laughs> made it into a craft beer bar, <laughs> and um, quite is quite successful, and um, he now, it was... Within 24 hours, he now switched the whole thing from a bar into a bottle shop. Like and, the, uh, well, the construction no, of it? Uh, no, basically the idea behind it because uh, this, he can't open the pub anymore. And uh, then he rebuilt it a bit and now it's full of beers and you can buy beers there. So yeah. now it's really a bottle shop. So now he's still allowed to open. Yeah. In... can have. In Belgium, also, a lot of bars are switching now more to be bottle shops. Um, is that something you see in all of Germany? Like, you, the, the bars are surviving now because they switch to a bottle shop, because they have a unique product to sell compared to your, to your normal Bitburger bar? But it's only the craft beer bars. So the normal bars are just closed. So it's really just the, the craft beer bars. And we only have one. So it's the only place at the moment where you can uh, buy special beers apart from the supermarkets. Yeah. Um, what is your, um, how do you see the future uh, after this pandemic in Germany, in the craft sector? Is there going to be a lot of breweries that are not going to make it in a lot of craft bars? Or do you think that the market is still strong in Germany to, uh, to get through? this pandemic economically? It's difficult to say, but my um, I'm always thinking positive, especially when it comes to beer. And uh, what I see is that it's not, it's not a perfect situation, of course, but I think uh, most craft beer breweries m are making the best of it. And uh, they started to run online shops and things like this, and they are not mm -hmm. that fully dependent on taps. So they can, put their beers in cans and bottles and uh, sell it. And it's, I think it's more difficult for the really big breweries and the middle-sized breweries, but the small craft beer breweries, I think most of them hopefully will make it. And I'm quite optimistic. Yeah. Is m most of the craft beer in Germany produced also uh, locally consumed, I assume? The problem in Germany is that uh, there are craft beer bars, of course, but all the other bars, uh, they have quite strict contracts that you are not allowed yeah. to sell other beer than the beer where the contract is. So it's in Trier, it's actually nearly impossible to get a tap for a, even for a local beer it's because it's all blocked by Bitburger beers. And um, it's so f because of this, most of the craft beer, I think, uh, is going out and uh, bottled and canned and then taken home and drank there so there's not that much of a transition at yeah. The moment. yeah we have the same <laughs> in belgium that uh, big breweries own the contracts of the bars because they own the the house and then they say you can only do a couple of beers uh that are not produced by us 
But still, there's a much bigger variety of beers when you go to a traditional Belgian pub. Am I? At least that's my impression. But maybe mm. I all, always go to the special pubs, <laughs> so <laughs> not to the normal ones. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Yeah, uh, th tell me a bit. Um, Two is also very closely located towards Luxembourg. Um, how is that mingling? Is there people from the craft scene of Luxembourg coming to Trier and vice versa, or uh, do you guys import a lot of Luxembourgish craft, uh, for example, from bear brewing? Can you find that easily there? Uh, no, that's uh, really hard to get uh, in Germany and. Uh... So it's you can find it somehow in the in the shops in Luxembourg, but even there it's quite difficult to get sometimes. And we know the guys from Totenhopfen quite well, and uh, they are bringing a lot of their beers uh, to Trier, and uh, they have certain spots where you can uh, buy their beers. But other beers from Luxembourg, it's really difficult, I okay. have to say. Ah, so because it's not because that like the border is physically so close that the beer also yeah. goes and finds their way very easily. No, 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 it's really difficult to get. Okay. But there are some interesting bars in Luxembourg and shops where you can buy it. And uh, the scene there is also growing. And it's a very interesting beer scene because Luxembourg is a international country. There are many people commuting uh, each day from Belgium, from France, from, uh, from Germany. There are many people from abroad uh, working there. Uh, so it's a really interesting international beer scene there. And they also have quite nice and small beer festivals, craft beer festivals. Yeah, of course. Uh, what are your goals for this year, event-wise or um, article-wise? Um, a lot uh, changed last year um, for me personally because I was not allowed to travel that much as I'm used to. Um, so I um, yeah, I learned a lot about beer and I made my beer sommelier. So I'm now a certified uh, beer sommelier. And yeah, let's see what uh, happens uh, this year in regards to this. Um, there's, in Germany, there's also a thing that comes uh, after the beer sommelier that's called the master of beer. Maybe it's more academic approach to beer, which is quite interesting for me. I like it a lot. Um, maybe I'll be doing this. And also what I, I'm doing is a bit consultancy for supermarkets and uh, yeah, uh, um, helping them buying craft beers and putting uh, craft beers uh, in a supermarket, which is really difficult and uh, challenging, but uh, always fun. And so um, at the moment, I'm more looking into some things to move a bit more into this uh, Beer world, and yeah, let's see what happens. How, how do you and do that? And of course, I want to travel again. I really miss traveling. <laughs> yeah, but uh, how do you do consulting for supermarkets in Germany to make them sell craft beer? They come to you then. Um, the first uh, I did was actually uh, the supermarket just around the corner here, and as it was just for me, I wanted them to have more craft beers <laughs> and more interesting <laughs> beers, and uh, the guys there were quite open. And I helped them a bit uh, buying the beers. And I, I was much uh, too um, uh, ambitious at the moment and brought very special beers there, only Polo and things like this, Puyala. Oh. And um, it was uh, uh, a disaster because <laughs> nobody <laughs> bought it. You can't just put it in the shelves and wait that people will buy it. So, <laughs> so it's a bit difficult. And uh, then we made a more realistic approach. We have much beers from Bavaria, from small breweries, just to yeah. have a higher level of quality. And then one of the most important things is uh, to teach the staff that they can help people when they're in front of the shelves and not to just do not know what to buy and that people at least have a rough idea what they have in the shelves um, and why yeah. it is so uh, expensive compared to other beers. And... Um, yeah, this is uh, always a challenge, but it's uh, also a lot of fun. Yeah, so the the training of supermarket staff that is most of the time probably non beer person to know like yeah. this beer has this type of hop or like, what, what's the difference with the German beer and why would I buy this so that they can uh, know which product they have on the, yeah. the shelf, of course. Yeah. 
I think the hops are too ambitious. <laughs> so if, they, if, they know, if they can say this is a hoppy one and this is a malty one, then then I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. And also paper wise, you, you helped them with the, the import papers and uh, stuff like that or? Yeah, we have some uh, distributors here in Germany we work together with and uh, ah. I'm doing all this stuff. Yeah. yeah cool, cool. All right, uh, Andy, thank you a lot for this uh, insight. Thank in you. The, uh, a lot of time. <laughs> in the Trier beer market. Uh, hope to see you soon in uh, 